I have a mountain in my hand. My layout is so torn apart right now. Whoa. Welcome back, folks. Hope you're having a great week. It's time to demolish my layout. No, no, okay, okay. I'm being a little dramatic. I was a little over the top. We are not demolishing the entire layout. A couple of weeks ago, I put out a video asking for your help in redesigning the elevated section of my layout. Thank you to everyone who left me comments and suggestions. I tabulated all of that data and came up with something that I think is gonna work pretty well. And this video is all about the redesign and phase one, which is the planning and a little bit of demo. Got to get my trusty drill ready. Oh yeah. We're going to cover everything from the new main lines that are going to go around my entire layout. Yes, the entire layout. I'm sure this will be 100% smooth sailing. Yeah, right. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. This layout renovation is going to solve two problems that I have. One is the clearance issue for larger rolling stock, like auto racks, intermodal containers, and of course, most importantly, my Polar Express car with the hobo on top. Take it to Earl. Every part of the elevated lines have been redesigned and they will be raised to eight inches off of the table surface. Eight inches is gonna give plenty of clearance for everything that I need to do. My current elevated tracks are on the north and south end of my layout. One is a basic loop that I've mainly used for conventional and post-war and MPC era trains. Don't worry, we're still gonna run all of those because those are some of my favorite trains to run. But rather than having two separate loops on the north and south ends of my layout, we're going to have two large sweeping loops that encompass the entire perimeter. The trains will travel from this bridge straight across to where I'm standing my passenger station will actually move up onto this elevated area. That will allow us to see the passenger station a little bit better. Then we're gonna go from over here, across the gap that I'm standing in, and end up over here in the town of Addison. Look how dirty that is. It's a mess over there, it's a mess. I've already started taking things off the layout, and quite frankly, I'm out of places to put things. Yeah, whatever. So we're gonna come over here. These bridges are coming out, the bridges that you see behind me. This red bridge will go to our traveling family Christmas layout that we do every year. More details about that and where you might be able to find that layout coming up. And the gray bridge is going to be donated to my brother, who is going to eventually build a layout for his kids. For the design, I used AnyRail software. If you've ever used AnyRail software, it's fantastic. You can also use SCARM, and there's a number of others. But I like the track database. I already had my original layout drawn in AnyRail and you'll see this plan with the two sweeping lines. The outer line uses a 96 inch diameter curve, which is huge. It's giving me much more room to turn around the articulated steam engines and the larger passenger sets. And the inner line is gonna be an 89 inch diameter curve. So we're going much larger than the 72 inch diameter curves that run the perimeter of my layout today. That again was the big challenge. I wanted to be able to run big steam engines across the bridges because they just look so magnificent when they span the bridges. When I look at my friends layouts like Eric or Chris from Chris's Trains and Things or Jason from JD Stucks, and you see an engine like the 4014 Big Boy traversing a bridge, it is just a magnificent sight and it creates these really engaging scenes. I wanted to have that on my layout. Now, how about track material? I'm gonna change this up a little bit for my elevated lines. The first O-Gage layout that I ever helped build was my dad's over at my parents' house. And it was a lot of fun to build, and dad used Gargrave's track. If you've been watching my channel and following along, you'll know that we have Lionel's fast track around the layout. And I really like both types of track. The reason I'm using Gargrave's up at the top is because of the noise. I've had a couple questions about track. Chris, what are the benefits of fast track? What are the benefits of Atlas or Gargrave's? What are the benefits of post-war tubular style track. Well, what I like about fast track is that not only is it available, easy to use, and easy to wire, but it's also extremely flat. Anyone who's ever used fast track knows that once you snap it together, you have this incredible surface. 
When you work with tracks like Atlas or Gargraves and you're using roadbed, you can get areas of your layout that may be inconsistent, some bouncy areas, and that's something I'm gonna have to look at while we're working on this elevated line. But to be honest, it's pretty simple to work with as well. Also, Gargraves is very quiet. The biggest drawback to fast track is the noise. I think we all know that hollow plastic track produces a ton of racket when the trains are running. I mean, sometimes it's overwhelming. And because these elevated lines will be sitting over top of hollow cavities, there's even more room for noise. So to cut down on the noise pollution, we're definitely gonna go with Gargraves. I got Roadbed. I think it's gonna be really cool and something fun and different to work with. So we'll have a blend of Fast Track and Gargraves on this layout. There's obviously gonna be quite a bit of work to do, but you gotta start somewhere. So I'm gonna start with taking this track off. You'll see, see how easy that was to wire? The Gargraves track is not gonna be that easy. You gotta solder that stuff, but it's gonna be okay. So what I'll do first is I'll take this track apart and then I'll take the trestles out and then we'll clear the scenes below so that we can make room to lay out the new track. So later this weekend, I'll lay out all of the track and make sure I can prototype my design so everything fits. Always wanna do an extra check when you can. Anyone in the market for fast track? I'm gonna have plenty of it after this. Let me know. Now it's time to pay tribute to my two elevated lines. And we're gonna look at some of my favorite clips of trains running over these elevated lines since my layout was first built in November of 2020. Kind of bittersweet, but I'm really looking forward to what's ahead. So enjoy these clips as much as I enjoyed making them. I'll keep you posted on all the progress as we continue to make these changes. For next week's video, I'm gonna head over to my dad's layout and we're gonna run the brand new Lionel 412-2. Yes, 412-2. It's a huge steam engine, but I didn't wanna do the video here because I got too much work going on. As always, a huge thank you to all of my subscribers. 
everyone who's been supporting this channel. My name is Chris, and this is RVP Trains. We'll see you next time.